Transmutation by Dr. George Washington Carey Turning of Water into Wine The Lord of Transmutation has ascended the throne of Aquarius to rule the world for 2,160 years. Aquarius, the fifth son, or son, of Jacob, meaning heel catcher, circles, or follows after. Dan is the Hebrew word for judge, thus the day or the time of judgment or understanding will have for its executor the revolutionary planet Uranus, or in Greek, Uranos. Uranus means son of heaven. This god is surely a suitable ruler for the zodiacal sign Aquarius, the man. And then shall appear the sign of the sun, sun of man in the heavens. Since the solar system is now in Aquarius, we may expect, as a matter of fact, we are experiencing the prophecies of great astrologians as recorded in Matthew 24 and also in Luke 2, 1. On the judgment day, or the time of knowledge, we are due to realize the process by which base metals are transmuted into gold. The word gold comes from ore, a product of the sun's rays, or the breath of life. Life, or spirit breathed into man, precipitates brain cells and gray matter which create or build the fluids and structure the physical man. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. God means power. Thus, the emanations from the sun, basic material, are changed to gold, and the process continues eternally. Alchemy is defined to be the science of transmitting metal into gold. This was not the real true meaning of alchemy. The real meaning was the transmutation of the lowest substance from the earth, the physical body, into the purest chemical vapor inside the body. It is this process that gives man the power to overcome death, both in Greek and in Hebrew, any fluid, including air or ether, was called water until organized. Then it was wine. The rain that falls on the ground and is taken up into the organism of trees, vegetables, or fruit is changed into wine, i.e. sap, juice, the parable of turning water into wine at the marriage of Cana and Galilee is a literal statement of a process taking place with each beat of the heart in the human organism. Galilee means a circle of water or fluid, the circulatory system. Cana means a dividing place, the lungs or reeds the tissue and cells of the lungs. Biochemists have shown that food does not form the organic part of blood, but simply furnishes the mineral base by setting free the inorganic cell salts contained in all food. The organic parts, oil, fibrin, albumin, etc., contained in food are burned or digested in the stomach and intestinal tract to furnish power to operate the human machine and draw air into the lungs, cana, thence into the arteries, i.e. air carriers. Therefore, it is clearly shown that the air, spirit, unites with the minerals and forms blood, proving that the oil, albumin, etc., found in blood is created by every breath at the marriage of Cana of Galilee. Air was called water or the pure sea, the Virgin Mary. So we see how water is changed into wine, 
blood every moment. In the new age, we will need bodies to correspond with the higher vibrations or motion of the new blood. For old bottles, bodies cannot contain the new wine. Another allegorical statement. This one in Revelation typifies the same truth. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, i.e. new mind and new body. Biochemistry may well announce along with Walt Whitman to the sick lying on their backs, I bring help, and to the strong upright man, I bring more needed help. To be grouchy, cross, irritable, despondent, or easily discouraged is evidence that the fluids of the stomach, liver, and brain are not vibrating at a normal rate, the rate that results in equilibrium or health. Health cannot be qualified, i.e. poor health or good health. There must either be health or dishealth, ease or disease. A sufficient amount of the cell salts of the body properly combined taken as food not simply to cure some ache or pain, form blood that materializes in healthy fluids, flesh and bone tissue. We should take the tissue cell salts just as one uses health foods, not simply to change dishealth to health, but to keep the rate of blood vibration and the frequency of health all the time. Biochemistry is the road sign pointing to the open country, to hills and green fields of health and the truth that shall set the seeking ego free from poverty and disease. Conservation and transmutation create consumer products in all the commercial world. The force of falling water is transmuted into the product of the factories, steam, the vibration of copper and carbon discs that turn night into day, and automobiles that run like lightning and jostle each other in the streets are all effects of the transmutation of base or basic material on some fair day. When the subtle vibrations of the Aquarian age directed by Oranos shall have wakened and called to action the millions of dormant cells of the wondrous brain. Man will, by the power of the lost word restored, conserve and transmute. The mineral substance of his body, the soul, I-O-H-N, with the product the precious ointment oil Christ. It triumphs over the cross at Golgotha and ascends to the pineal gland. There it transmits the christened sun to the optic thalamus, the all-seeing eye of the chamber, and thus furnishes light to all that are in the house. In these troubled times, the business world has been dominated by a great oil trust of mineral oil, petra, stone, rock, or mineral oil has been greatly exploited and by the law of transmutation changed into gasoline. The transmutation of gasoline by the miracle of conservation of energy causes the ascension of the jetliners and the pathway of man lies across vaulted sky. And when the ego triumphs over the carnal mind, and transmutes the crude soul fluids into the gold of the new wine, it will ascend to the Father, the upper brain, where the temple needs no light of the sun by day, nor moon by night, for the light of the Lord doth lighten it. The miracle of turning water into wine is found only in John's gospel and it appears as a companion piece to the multiplication of universe, the Hindu texts. However, do not tell us that prana 
Shakti has electromagnetic frequencies and qualities. The mechanism that is operative in the human body, which in turn is behind the evolution of the mind-brain, is called Kundalini. This brings us to the dangerous part that was seldom explained fully in the past. There is nothing in the organic structure of the human being so intricate and so fraught with peril as this powerful force and the adverse ways that it can operate within the physical body. Because it is both spiritual, meaning non-physical, as well as biological or physical, it can become sick or malignant. Those who practice kundalini disciplines may indeed tap into an ocean of awareness or consciousness in which the wonderstruck ego appears like a dim and distant floating dot lost in the vastness of its surroundings. When this happens, it is actually the result of exciting the nervous system of the body through various practices that have been employed for this purpose by all religions for thousands of years. Kundalini appears to occur when the complex nervous system of the body is short-circuited. This can happen when the initiate is touched by a guru, priest, rabbi, etc., who is an abundance of what the mesmerists of the 19th century called animal magnetism. What often follows such an activation is a visionary experience which can assume a concrete form dependent on an individual's personal belief system. For instance, if one is prone to imagine a divine being such as a savior or even an old man with a white beard or impersonal images of radiant glowing light, such will quite probably pass before the mind's eye. Erotic dramas may also be played out as sexual energy floating in the brain and find expression in dreams or visionary imagery. All of this is a product of bioenergy, which I prefer to refer to as sperm energy flow. There is a cord present in the human seed that is responsible for the paranorma of life and the means of activating this energy has been man's best kept secret since the dawn of antiquity. But the means of activating this bioenergy is deceptive. It is not activated through methods of meditation, prayer, emotional outburst, faith, fear, etc. Nevertheless, when the bioenergy is activated, the initiate experiences an explosion of consciousness. His whole body immediately is transferred into a state of extreme excitation. But after the experience passes, he is left with, bro left with a broken vessel. His body no longer can function as previously. Although he has experienced new knowledge about himself and the world, he cannot use it. He is controlled and limited, and in the point of fact, he may as well have evolved into nothingness. He can no longer express his pain, and to the contrary, he now calls it happiness. The question with which we began this investigation into remains, by whom is this individual controlled? And for what purpose? End of part one. Transmutation by George W. Carey.